Hello. Do you know what binge watching is? Do you know binge watching is actually stopping you from losing weight? Do you know what else can binge watching do to you? So the new addiction is binge watching. I am Dr. Rajeshwaran, endocrinologist and I specialize in weight management at the London Obesity Clinic and I see hundreds and hundreds of patients both in the National Health Service and in my private clinic and I see people from all over the world. And this, it's a standard story, they've tried all sorts of diets, a low carb, high protein and cabbage, soup diet and you name it, you can have an adjective and a noun and you can put it and it's a diet. And the, the most important thing is these days, advice about diet is free. If you're telling that um, you're on a diet, people come to you and they would give their advice about that diet and how they succeeded, how their grandmother succeeded. And there are lots of tablets and injections and bariatric surgery. So the huge number of interventions for weight loss. But the sad bet is there are 2 billion people and it's growing people with overweight and obesity. Why is that? If everybody knows what to do, eat less and exercise more, why is that the number of people with uh, overweight, those who are overweight and obesity is going up? That's because there are lots of other factors other than food and activity, other than eating less and exercising more. There are lots of other things which you need to look into. So I'm going to talk about binge watching. So what is binge watching? So according to a survey by Netflix, if you're watching five to six episodes of a one TV show, sat in one go and completing it, that's binge watching. By the way, 86% of millennials are binge watching. It was a shock to me. No wonder uh, the weight is going up among the millennials. So they spend hours and hours binge watching. So why do they do that? The fact is these guys, Netflix, Amazon Prime, they're very bright guys who run this. So you sat, you're sat in your living room watching a serial on say Netflix and then as soon as it's going to get complete the next episode is already uploaded. You don't need to do anything, you can just keep sitting as a couch potato on your sofa and then the next bit starts. So by the time you know, actually you have seen 10 hours of uh, whatever is there on Netflix. So that's um, Netflix for you. Why is that? Why do you do that? And why are they so bright, Netflix and Amazon? In fact, thanks to the binge watchers, there's going to be Disney Plus, Apple TV, HBO Max. So they have found out there are lots of binge watchers and why not make money? So what happens in binge watching? So why do you do it? The thing is binge watching is socially acceptable addiction. For example, you smoke cannabis, people are going to be angry, you're going to be ostracized from the society. If you drink a lot of alcohol, it can affect your health and also it costs a lot of money. But this form of addiction is fantastic. You just lie in your sofa, switch your telly on and boom, you're transferred to another world. If you're there with lots of people, you identify with a character and you have a roller coaster. Lots of hormones are produced, adrenaline and dopamine and the oxytocin hormone which is there when it's produced during ejaculation. You get all sorts of uh, emotions, a huge um, a roller coaster drive. So that's fantastic. So what happens after 10 hours? Have you, have you just experienced what really happens after 10 hours of binge watching? You know what happens? Everyone whom you are living in this make-believe world, they've all left your living room. There's no one, you're alone, probably your friend next to you and that's it. You're on your own and suddenly there's all those adrenaline and dopamine rushes flat out. So you feel really depressed and you feel really bored, depressed, morose. This is exactly what happens with binge eating. You know, binge eaters, binge eaters gorge on lots of food and then they feel guilty and then they try to vomit and bring everything out. 
The similar sort of sequence goes on with binge watching. But you don't realize this and there's a huge nice little research which was done and they found out that a significant portion of people, proportion of people who binge watch have depression, anxiety, social insecurity. Is it good? Are you going to still binge watch? Okay, I talked about binge watching. You know, we all binge watch to release stress. But the problem is, it can be counterproductive. So what are the consequences? And why does it promote weight gain? And why do you binge eat afterwards? Or even while you are uh, binge watching? The reason is, that I, I said before that lots of hormones are produced including the love hormone oxytocin and so you get this buzz and so you start um, continuing to binge watch. According to Professor Suzanne Higgs, professor in psychobiology of appetite at the University of Birmingham, UK, she noted in her research that food which was tasty to start with usually becomes less tasty and you gradually start to slow down which may be due to reduction in the taste and also the fullness kicks in. However, while watching telly or on your iPad or um, computer, whatever your device is, the sensation of reduced taste and fullness may be overcome by the stimulant effect of TV viewing and you continue to eat. And also, there's another thing is, the fact that you are sat in your room watching television, this gives you as if you are with lots of people. You're having a get together, a party, and this is called social facilitation. So binge watching not only keeps you um, buzzed up, but also it gives you a feeling of social facilitation. So it seems that people can eat up to 40% more ice cream when you're in company of others. So while binge watching, you've got a huge number of people, the hero, heroine, and the lots of uh, people dancing around and um, um, there's a villain. So you're part of the team. So you obviously, you've got lots of company and you binge eat. And when the movie stops, you're all alone. You're a lonely guy. Okay. So when did all this start? And we know that it's all started in the last five years, but the fact that this problem with eating in front of the telly started in early 1950s. A guy called Swanson started marketing frozen food. And obviously he wanted to sell all these frozen food cheap in bulk. So he brought about the concept of TV dinners. So, and the tagline for marketing was, I may be late, but dinner will not be late. So that's how you marketed all these frozen food. So, you know, in the past, say 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, people sat around on the floor and they had fun and then they had this chat, a gossip, and the whole family was around and they, that's how they ate food. Then they shifted to a dining table and then there was probably someone playing on the piano or a music. And then it was dinners in front of television. Now the families have shrunk and it's just you, your kid or your partner. Um, and then you've got this Netflix and Amazon Prime. And that's all. You, you, you're in a very small community. But then this uh, uh, episode on the telly makes you a part of the bigger community. Wilmot and colleagues in the journal Diabetologia in 2012 published an article showing that sedentary time is associated with an increased risk of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality. That's because of increased sitting time. So if you sit more, you're more likely to develop cardiovascular disease. So you know these breaks which they provide in um, movies for the adverts, it's not just to give you adverse, it's for you to get away and run, go to the loo or have uh, probably a drink of water. So uh, stretch your legs, so sh slash your sitting time. Thou shalt not sit all the time while watching television. So inactivity leads to type 2 diabetes and obesity. 
But actually, it's much more serious than that. It's not just diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It's also mental health problems. As I said, as soon as you stop binge eating, I'm sorry, binge watching, because it's same, both are nearly the same. As soon as you stop binge watching, you feel anxious. So there's more mental health problem in this group of people. Of the 2000 binge watching British people, surveyed by patient.info, those aged 18 to 24 years were five times more likely to feel lonely, three times more likely to feel depressed, and twice as likely to feel anxious, sleepless, and empty. Well, do you want to be part of this group? Think out. Do you, know, do you want to still binge watch? So it's, it's a vicious cycle. Look at this cycle. There's binge watching, you eating, weight gain, you're getting socially isolated, so you don't want to socialize, don't want to go to the party because the dress doesn't fit you. So what do you do? Sit alone, watch more, eat more, become bigger. So it's a vicious cycle. You need to break it. Now, I know I told about its impact on diabetes and obesity and then mental health problems. But the serious problem is um, drop in lean body mass. You know, your muscle mass can drop. Have you ever seen a person who has had a fracture and was supposed to put on a cast? And you know, when the cast is removed, you, have, you see these thin um, limbs, it's completely emaciated limbs where the, all the muscles have gone. And that's what may happen to you if you sit for too long in front of the telly. So you may lose your muscle mass, and if you're trying to lose weight, you can never be successful in the long run. So losing muscle mass is called sarcopenia, and that's not good for weight loss and not good for general health. So if you're in the habit of binge watching, I would advise you to have a dumbbell or a one liter water bottle and keep moving your arms and legs. Um, use this water bottle, use other props so that you keep improving your lean body mass. So what else can binge watching do? It can upset your sleep. So if you keep watching, binge watching and sleep in the sofa, your sleep quality is not good. And we know from research that binge watching affects our body's melatonin, other hormones, so your regulation of sleep is affected. And then this in turn leads to lots of medical conditions, including diabetes, uh, heart attack. An article in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine shows that binge watching leads to poor quality sleep and increased fatigue. And also there's a high incidence of heart attacks. A study published in the journal Science Daily showed that leisure time sitting, that's watching telly, but not sitting at work. So you need to be uh, able to differentiate. Sitting time is okay at work to some extent, but it's worse when you're at home watching telly. So in this particular study published in the Science Daily, they showed a greater risk of heart disease and death among the 3,500 participants. So it may be that most people tend to watch television for hours without moving, while most workers get up from the desk frequently. So as mentioned previously, please get up, stretch yourself, move your limbs more often and not sit like a couch potato. Well, another surprising thing is, did you know that your sex life can be upset, your sperm can, count can come down, and you may even become infertile. Research published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine showed that those who spend lots of time watching TV or DVDs or um, on their um, iPad, tablets and mobiles for at least 20 hours a day had a low sperm count that is 44% lower than men who spend little time in front of the box. So beware. If you spend too much time in front of the telly, your sperm count can come down. We know that moderate exercise improves sex life and also sperm count. So why does this happen? Why do you think just sitting in front of the telly and eating and putting on weight can reduce your sperm count? I don't think Netflix and Amazon Prime knew about your sperm count. So what happens is testicles in a man 
is outside the body, whereas ovary in a woman is inside the body. Why is that? Because the testicles have to be 2 degrees centigrade less than the body temperature. However, men who are big and you've got a big paunch and the big binge watch have their testicles wrapped up in the blankets of their tummy and the thighs and the whole scrotum is thinking as if it's inside the body so it's not doing its job so it's producing less testosterone so watching hours and hours of television can lead your testicles to think it's inside the body and it will stop producing testosterone and ruin your sex life and contribute to infertility Okay, how does binge watching impact your hunger and weight? You know, stress, immobility, mindless eating, lack of sleep can all disturb how your body perceives hunger. In Simply Weight, we don't just tell you to eat less and exercise more, we con concentrate on hunger. Hunger is one of our key interventions. Ability to identify hunger and fullness is the key to successful weight management. So when you see your doctor or nurse or a dietitian next time for weight loss, please bring out this topic about hunger and fullness. Don't just uh, um, look at their uh, diet plan and go away. Have I frightened you of binge watching? Well, uh, it's not to frighten you, it's just to make you aware that you can have lots of medical conditions. You may struggle to lose weight if you continue to binge watch. There are lots of research on it, so I'm not just pulling it out. I'm not against Netflix or Amazon Prime. All I'm saying is be reasonable. Make sure when you're grazing at the, gazing at the screen that you can't do it for too long. It can affect your mental and physical health, both in the short and in the long run. Okay. We have talked a lot about binge watching. How do you not binge watch? Or how do you not put on weight with binge watching? So what I usually advise is, first thing is, get rid of this autoplay. Put it in an off position, the autoplay. Next thing is, set an alarm. You know, you don't want to have Netflix taking you for a ride. So set an alarm so you can say that, okay, after one hour, I'm going to stop. Have something to do, something very important to do after one hour. I know most of you like eating popcorns and chips and nachos and all those stuff. But I would advise you to carry something in a bowl, not the whole bag. So carry a small amount of chocolates or nachos or popcorns in a bowl. So that at least, even if you want to eat more, at least you are going up and standing up and walking. Make sure when there's less activity, get up and start walking, stroll around. And set an alarm also to drink water. You know, people can get dehydrated, completely dehydrated, watching hours and hours of binge watching. Have an understanding with your mate, friend, uh, wife or partner or, or kid saying that, okay, after one hour, you're going to go for a stroll or you're going to go to the next room and discuss something different or do something different. So you need to break. You can't do it all at a stretch for a six to 10 hours. So it's very, very important to see if you can adapt some of these techniques to stop binge watching. Okay, good luck for not binge watching.